Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, 90% Native. My name is Michelle and I grow native plants and I garden for the wildlife. Today, I am going to take you on a little tour of my vegetable garden and that is what is behind me here. This vegetable garden has been in place for a few years now and I've used it for a few different things. Sometimes I'll use it for cutting flowers. Sometimes I've used it for vegetables like this year sometimes for native plants. I have a new plan uh, for next year on how I'm going to use the vegetable garden and I will talk about that as we move into the fall and winter sowing season. But today it is mainly going to be about vegetables and herbs. So in front of my vegetable patch, you'll see that I have the native shrub shrubby St. John's wort or Hypericum prolificum. You guys know this is one of my favorite plants. It is a really great shrub and actually for the first time ever the deer nibbled on it a little bit so I'm not getting as many beautiful yellow blooms as I have in the past but it is still um, proving to be a really good hedge, nice looking hedge for in front of my vegetable garden. Okay, so as you can see around the vegetable garden, I have about a five to five and a half foot fence. This is because I have a really bad problem with deer. You guys know I complain about the deer all the time. Now, typically a five, five and a half foot fence is not gonna cut it to keep the deer out. However, because it is a space that's on the smaller side and because I have arch trellises and bamboo canes and things like that, the deer have pretty well stayed out of this area. And I really truly believe it's because of all the different things that I have inside the vegetable garden because they don't want to jump uh, onto something. They're very weary of uh, jumping onto anything that could hurt them. So they pretty much stayed out. Walking into my vegetable garden, I have two raised beds over uh, these two right here on the right and left side. These are eight by four in the back here. I have a 12 by four bed. In the corner of the front on each side, I have a little triangular shaped um, raised bed where right now there's a lot of borage um, in there. And then around the borders of the bed, I did something different this year. What I did is I just basically dumped out what I had had in my grow bags there and put that, just dumped that soil out, made a mound on either side and planted tomatoes in there. And then along the two sides of the bed, I was experimenting with just buying a bag of compost and putting a tomato plant in um, each of the bags. So that's experimental this year. If it doesn't like work out as planned, then I'll probably just turn them over, dump them and not do the bag thing next year, but that's still to be determined. So let's talk about this bed over here first. This is my pepper bed. And as you can see, the peppers are coming along. We have blossoms and blooms, and we even have some peppers. So I did a ton of different variety of peppers. I did shishito and red bell peppers and mini bell peppers. And I did, let's see what else we have in here. Orange bell, cayenne. What's this one? Oh, this is the ahi. This is one that I heard about on um, Whispering Willow Farm that's like the most expensive um, pepper for chefs to buy. So we'll see how this one does. But yeah, here's um, some peppers here and there. This one is a cayenne. And then we have this one was a friend, is um, from a friend. This is called Datil. This was from my friend Aruna. And then also from Aruna was Bueno Matata. Look at these really pretty purple ones. Very pretty. And let's see, we have a Poblano from my friend and neighbor. And back here, we just have more jalapenos and things like that. I do have a couple native plants here that I'm letting grow that I will um, transplant in the fall, I don't want to kill them because um, 
the geraniums i for some reason have a hard time with hardy geraniums these guys bloom beautifully this year and i just want to give it the best chance of survival so i'm going to move this to a dry semi-shady spot in the fall and then on the back edge there where it's kind of shaded i have um different types of lettuces they're looking to bolt right now but i want to do a lot more with lettuces this fall and next year in the future because i eat so many salads that it would behoove me to have more lettuce growing for free okay so this corner garden is basically the same as the other corner garden and you'll see that the borage have been eaten up by something which i've kind of been letting it grow here like this and not removing it because I think it's acting as like a sacrificial plant for my cucumbers and my tomatoes. This is a self seeded or sown partridge berry that I let grow because well, I'll talk about that later. And then here is my, <laughs> my little gherkin plant that's not doing so well. This is why I'm actually thinking that I think the bugs are done on the borage. So I might take it out and give that guy some room to grow and see if he can't do something before the end of the season. I forgot to mention down here I have thyme and I have, I believe this is lemon basil. Let me smell it. Yeah, lemon basil. I like to use that for making a tea. Now over on this side of the cutting bed, you'll see I have a huge swath of partridge pea. It even grows in here and I just pull it out, but I let it grow here because the bumblebees go crazy for partridge pea. Can you hear it? I hope you could hear that, but <laughs> the bumblebees go crazy for the partridge pea and tomatoes need buzz pollination um, to set fruit to become pollinated. And so I'm thinking that this is a perfect com companion plant for tomatoes. It's something that I've been trying out this year and last year. So let me take you around here. And this is a tomato that I think I'm gonna be growing more of and I'll tell you why. I haven't tasted it yet, so it still has to go through the taste test. But this is I think you pronounce it where a kawaii and look how short it is. It's only about, let's see, this one max three feet tall. And so you know how some tomatoes can become unmanageable. So these are doing fantastically here in my raised bed. So I'm very much looking forward to having all of these pollinate and tasting these tomatoes. And look, see, look how close these tomatoes are to my partridge pea. So this is really gonna have to work. Like I'm really thinking that this is, I'm onto something here with the partridge pea. Anyway, I'm gonna do more of these. I have one in a container on my deck. It's not doing as well as these, but um, still I'm thinking this is a really, really great option for the deck. These then here and there I have baby Romas. So I'm hoping this is as tall as they get because they're supposed to be baby Romas. And right now they're probably about three or four feet tall and I have them caged in tomato cages. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully that's it. If I'm not mistaken, Romas are determinate tomatoes. So they'll only grow so tall, put on their fruit, and then you harvest them versus indeterminate tomatoes where they just keep um, providing fruit all season long. So we'll see how that works out, but I do have to double check that for you guys about Roma's being determinant. I thought that they were. Uh -oh. oh, it looks like this broke. I'm gonna have to get Scott to fix that. I mean, I guess I could fix it, but I try and save a couple things for him to do around here. Uh oh. I'm just making it worse. Okay, back here I have some more shishitos, a row of shishitos right here. And then here I have some little baby tomatoes. I think these are Floridade. And they should be determinate as well. So the Floridade and the Romas are the only determinate tomatoes I have. On the trellises here, 
I have green beans. I have Blue Lake and Kentucky Wonder beans. I also am trying something out this year where with the beans, I have um, some cherry tomatoes growing that I'm just kind of intertwining with the beans as they grow up here. So I'm hoping they just grow up and over with the beans and I can harvest those. And then I have a variety of tomatoes. So this is a silver slicer I've already been harvesting off of. Oh, this was a cucumber that died, so I put a sun gold cherry tomato right here. Here is a Space Master, I think it's Space Master 80. And I've already been harvesting off of this one too. And here's a new cucumber. So what I'm doing is I'm running this, these cucumbers up and over the trellis. On the other side, I have another silver slicer and then a market more and then a gherkin. So these are all trellising up. If you notice the flats, along the edges of the raised beds. Those are my natives that I'm growing um, until they're mature enough to um, transplant out. So we have um, wild petunias, hoary skullcap, um, rubecchia, fire pink, pearly everlasting. This was a new one for me. This is euphorbia corallata. And those are supposed to be tall bellflower, and I just think my seeds must have been way too old. So we'll see what happens there. Okay, and then back here, um, some unsuccessful moments here. Although, I don't know, we'll see. So right here, I have the Magda zucchini. Um, I saw on YouTube, I think it's Gardening with Jacques. He really prefers these to the regular zucchinis. I had one back there. It doesn't look like it's doing so well. These look like they're rebounding and I had made a teepee for them to grow up. So I'm trying that out like I'm trying out growing the cucumbers up the trellis, which seem to be working really well. Over here are supposed to be bush beans and I actually think I planted pole beans. So I got to fix that. And then just here are some uh, native turtle heads that need to be planted out in the fall and some leftover gladiolas. Um, let's see what else we have. Oh, over here, this is celery. And then I have more peppers here. These ones are um, habanada, so heatless habaneros. And then these ones are nada pinos here, so heatless jalapenos. I did have some leaf lettuce basil in front here and over there. Those um, did not actually turn out for me, unfortunately. Um, oh, yeah, and I have mini bell peppers here. All my peppers seem to be doing pretty well. I started them early, but they didn't get a good start because I, I transplanted them out too early. So they're kind of recovering from that. Just in case you're wondering, these are button bushes. Over there, I have some yellow violets and what do I have here? I don't know. Yellow violets and something. I can't remember. Okay. So you guys know I try to do some new stuff with tomatoes this year, growing a lot more varieties. And I also talked about how I started them later. I brought them out earlier because in Virginia, we also, we always get a fall spring that I get suckered into. And, um, so yeah, my tomatoes suffered horribly because of that. However, some are rebounding. So I'm hoping that I just get some really late tomatoes um, so I can give um, them all a try for the ones that made it. So first up we have champagne bubbles over here. These are black strawberries that I don't think are gonna make it. Um, here is a Paul Robeson, which I don't think is going to make it, which is a shame. And then, I mean, this one may rebound. I mean, it's tiny, but who knows? And then we have Costaluto. I'm really hoping this one rebounds because this one was a James Prigioni recommendation. I was really excited about um, some of his tomato videos. If I remember, I'll pop them into the description. Here's a lemon boy because a deer ate the top of that lemon boy somehow. <laughs> so. I was, I happened to find one in Lowe's. I couldn't believe it, so I got that. This is a pink ox heart. And then down here we have a little indigo apple. The 
tomatoes that I planted first up front, those ones are doing pretty well. So that's a lemon boy. Let me go around here. Here's the lemon boy that the deer got somehow. I think it was sticking out through the fences and they chomped it off and pulled it through. This is a soldaki that is, um, wasn't doing so well, but then just started to take off. This guy right here is doing fantastic and already has some fruit on it right here. This is another Costaluto. Look, it's gonna have that really cool wrinkling. Okay, over here we have Floridade. This is the determinant. And so it's putting on fruit. This one looks like it's being eaten up. Do you guys know what's eating that? If you do, put some comments. That might be birds, I don't know. Um, this one is, oh, Rosa de Bern. I'm really excited about this Rosa de Bern. This one's getting nice and tall. And then finally over there, there's another indigo apple. I bought some from Lowe's to replant or to replace the tomatoes that didn't survive. So that one is a big beef. I don't think that's going to do anything. This is another indigo apple. It's still small. We'll see if it comes through with any fruit. Then we have Better Boy with native <laughs> steeple bush. This one is Aroma. I think that's Aroma. And oh, Mexican Midget. And then those two are Super Sweet 100s. Those are my favorite cherry tomatoes, Super Sweet 100s. So these ones right here, I did not plant from seed and I purchased them right when I got back from um, my vacation when I realized <laughs> the tomato situation wasn't going so well. Okay, on the back fence here, I have, um, I have pole beans that didn't, that didn't work out the way I wanted. So we'll just see if they end up producing anything, who knows. That. Okay, so I wanna sum up really quick a couple of the things that have worked and that haven't worked. Okay, my peppers, they're doing fine. They're working for me. They might be a little bit slow because of user error, but I think we're gonna do well there. The wear kawaii seem to be like really, you know, they, they're gonna be a really good crop, I think. So I'm excited about those. I'm really excited about trellising up cherry tomatoes around the arch trellises along with the, um, the cucumbers. I wasn't able to get a Kajari melon to take off. Something eats it every single year. Um, my Lebanese zucchinis seem to be on the comeback. So we're gonna um, keep our fingers crossed and hope that that TP is a good um, resource to keep the uh, zucchini staked up. Oh, also something that I forgot to mention earlier, I am finding that the bok choy or pak choy has been a really good sacrificial crop for um, some of the brassicas and my cucumbers. I don't know all the details of that just yet. I almost am getting the feeling like it might be like kind of, you know, the Mother Hubbard of um, vegetables, you know, Mother Hubbard uh, squash. They are supposed to be a really good um, sacrificial crop as well. And I wasn't able to get seeds this year. So anyway, stay tuned on that. Something to okay, think about. Guys. It is um, another scorcher in Northern Virginia and it is an even nine o'clock in the morning. So I am going to um, wrap this up. Uh, I apologize that I haven't been around too much lately. We had a very long vacation and then we had a medical issue in the family um, that I needed to be around for. So hopefully I'll get back on track guys. here. But thank you for sharing your time with me here today on this scorching, hot, humid Virginia summer day. I appreciate your time. Happy gardening, and I will catch you again next time.